Hi guys, Tristan here with SUV RVing and occasionally I like to feature other people's adventure mobiles, other people's rigs on this channel to give you ideas of how you can make it work on the road in whatever vehicle you have. And today we're featuring Eric. He has a YouTube channel called Escaping Normal Life. He has a Subaru Forester, so he has an SUV, but he's pulling a little teardrop trailer, a little camper with it. And so I've never talked to anyone really who, who has one of these. I've never interviewed someone. I've never done a tour of a, of a teardrop camper before. So I thought it would be interesting just in case it, it fits with how you want to travel, if it fits your uh, your desired on the road lifestyle. So we're gonna do a full tour of his setup and talk to him a little bit about how and why he travels and everything like that. So let's go ahead and turn it over to Eric. Yeah, I was working uh, at a job that for 16 years, that was a great job, but in the end it just wasn't for me. And I had been wanting to do some traveling for over 20 years now. And that traveling meant traveling the entire country uh, in one year. It was a big venture and it took a lot of planning to get here, but I finally got here and I'm absolutely loving it. I'm nine months in, I'm almost coming into the end of my one year journey and uh, hoping to go a little bit longer than one year actually. So my teardrop trailer that I live in full time is a 2012 Little Guy trailer. Little Guy is actually the brand, it's not just the size. And uh, yeah, it's perfect for everything that I do. It's just me, uh, you can sleep two in there, but it's just me, so it gives me plenty of space for storage. In a minute, you'll see the back open up here. That's my galley, it's my cook area. So it's absolutely great, I love it. I usually use it in open dispersed camping spots like we're in today. I'm not too big on established campgrounds. They usually have a little too many people at them and usually come with a price. And I quit my job to do this full time. So I was uh, had the luxury of having a little bit of money saved up to do this full time. But uh, that means I also have to kind of watch my dollars. And campsites are about $30 roughly every night. So that adds up really quickly. And uh, I find that I get everything I need out here in nature. Um, I'm fully set up with solar that you'll see in a little bit. So I can go off grid for roughly a week or so with my water situation. And it works for me. So come on, let's take a look. So this is my galley, this is my cook area. Pops up and this is it. So what I love about this space is that it gives me lots of prep area. Um, first off, this is my two burner. Pull this out, right here. Fold this up, I got a two burner right here. And there you go. Originally, I was using these little one uh, pound green tanks to do all my cooking. But I quickly realized that these are very expensive, especially in California. They were about $9 a piece. So while I was on the road, I was able to get set up. Somebody was getting rid of these little, I think they're like five pound tanks. Uh, one gallon, maybe take six. And I got, I got two of these. So I have one up here that I always use. And then I have one on my tongue area that I use of the trailer uh, that I use for as my backup. Because sometimes I run out and I need some gas. So I have an extra. So this is perfect for my, for my setup, for my cooking. So this is obviously cook space. And what I really like about this is that when this comes out, this whole area right here is another place I can just put food, you know, stuff on my water or whatever that I'm not using, just get out of my way. <clears throat> and then this becomes my prep space, the space I'm actually gonna cook on. I have back here, two big cutting boards. Most of the stuff you'll, that I had at home, or most of the stuff I have with me is stuff that I had from home. So I had these uh, cutting boards. I had a bunch of utensils and stuff, I had, like real, utensils. Uh, I have some plastic ones, but of course they can uh, melt on a really hot stove or anything, especially because I cook on cast iron. So I like real things like that. And then this box is kind of my uh, dry goods, but it also has some condiments and things in there. So uh, I have some, I always have a very clean space. I love cleaning up my counter space when I'm done cooking. So I always have some cleaner back here. Then I have some canned goods and things back here. This is a little hack that actually works really well for me. Um, where I have my phone here, you see it mounted. This is actually a bike uh, mount that I took the back off, put some Velcro on, and bam, I got a place to put my phone. And the reason I like that is that now, with the facial recognition, um, I someone texts me or something like that, I can just tap it and look at it and unlock my phone just by looking at it. 
but I'm always listening to podcasts and music. I'm a big uh, music person. So now I have just audio coming. I can just listen to it, which is great. And I can just easily see what the song is because I'm always wondering like, who, who's the song? Uh, paper towels you can see over here. Uh, this is a little thing that I got that I love. <clears throat> this is a little fold up mirror. What I like about it is it easily sits up like this or walk around the side with me here. That's where I uh, brush my teeth, shave. This is where I put my contacts in or something like that. And it's great, it's hands free and it's, I have, to, I have to get down a little bit, kind of tall, but it's perfect eyesight for the most part. So yeah, so that works out really well. I love this. Oh, and then I just keep it. I keep it in the box. It keeps it in the box when it came with. That way it doesn't break because it is a mirror. The guy that built this for me is a friend of mine who built this for me. And it's great because he gave me kind of like compartments. So this compartment, it's got a small divider here. And then I got all my plates in here, just kind of perfect size. Again, some more utensils in here. I have some Reynolds wrap and things like that over here. This area, this box has become um, cookware. So I have uh, my cast irons. I have a big like 12 inch cast iron. I think this is an eight inch little camp set you can pick up on Amazon. I picked this up for like 30 bucks. It's got a kettle in it, a little cooking pot. <clears throat> and then this box has become silverware. Again, I like cooking with real stuff because this won't melt. <laughs> and because I cook on cast iron, this I can just like get in there, like scrape away things. So I love actually having real silverware. Um, and then this little area, I have a little measuring cup and things. Spices right in this area. So yeah, it's kind of perfect for all my stuff back here. So this is where I spend a good amount of my time, uh, not just for cooking, but also sometimes hanging out. I got my chair over here. I love this rocking chair. Pick this up. I mean, you can't go wrong, right? Table, a drink, music, love it. So that's my cooking area, my setup in the back. Let's fall around to the side, take you, show you a look inside. So first off, I love these big doors. I have one on each side. I usually just use this one because it's much easier for me to get in and out. My other side's got my bed on it. Right here, I'm actually inside so the sun is not in my face. And I actually have a little chair I'll show you in a minute. I can sit right here, inside here, get out of the sun. Just sit very comfortably. You can see my feet are planted on the, on the ground and I'm good to go. So let me take my shoes off, climb inside, and you can follow me and you can see how I live inside this. All right, so one of the things that I, it's a great little hack for me, I'm gonna reach in and get my shoes. Dirty shoes, off the dirty ground, shower cap. Take your shower cap, there you go. No more dirt in your trailer, love it. This little mat that is actually on, um, I got just at an REI. And what's great about this is if dirt does, does get in here, which it does often still, take it out, shake it off, no more dirt inside. Also, I put a rug down here just to give it a little more of a home feel. Um, below me is just really just a linoleum floor or something like that. Uh, not very attractive, not very comfortable to sit on. So the rug gives me a little more comfort. Uh, I'm actually just sitting on a little stadium seat. And what I usually do here, it's got a little pillow behind me for old backrest. There you go. I can sit back and relax. Watch some movies on my phone, uh, watch some YouTube, watch some SUV RVing. And uh, yeah, I can sprawl out. I can actually get in out of the cold, the rain, uh, anything. Um, this is my little home. So bed, obviously to my right. This is a sleeping pad made by Nemo. And uh, it's very comfortable for me. It's a pretty good one. So about three, three and a half inch thick. So it's a little bit more of a thicker sleeping pad with a good sleeping bag. Last night, um, we're in Stanley, Idaho, and last night it got down to 31 degrees, 34 degrees, something like that. So it was pretty cold. So this bag is a 35 degree bag. It works pretty well. Uh, I also have a fleece liner in there. And for just give me a little more comfort because this is my home, I took these king sheets and folded them over with some um, fabric glue and I made kind of a cocoon inside. So now I have like some sheets and my bed. And you can see I put those sheets also over the mattress here. So just feels a little more comfortable. Feels like a real bed to me that I'm not just sleeping on air. This foam pad right here, underneath, I got this originally as a pillow top to go on top of the mattress. But personally, and I thought it would be more comfortable, but personally I found that it actually hurt my back a lot. 
So I took it off the top and put it on the bottom. And the reason I put it down there instead of just tossing it completely is because now it helps with blocking cool air coming up underneath the mattress. And I have camped plenty of nights in cold temperatures. I think the coldest night was like 16 degrees. So it got pretty cold, not in the trailer, but outside. Uh, but it definitely has helped, I think. Uh, and gives me a little elevation. I'm not sleeping right on the ground. It gives me a tad bit more elevation. Uh, also, what's really great about these windows is the shade. Gives me a little privacy, but also more light when I want to crawl in. And these bug screens you see here, just Velcro it in. And there you go. I can actually have my door completely open. Good airflow, no bugs. On a really nice night, out in some really good boondocking spaces, I've actually slept with the door completely open. And yeah, been fine tonight, very comfortable. Above me, what's great about this trailer is it actually has a fan. So I can turn that on, get a little flow. But also, I like just having it open. Gives a little sunlight kind of feeling. Then I have cabinets. Now my cabinets are all my clothes. So I try to, I'm a pretty organized person. I try to be at least organized as possible. Easy to find things when, when I need to. So the right side of my cabinets has become a little bit more winter gear because I'm now summertime and I don't use as much of this stuff. But I have some beanies over there. I think I have a sweatshirt over there or something like that. Then I have shorts, shirts, socks and underwear in the middle, and pants. That's kind of kind of my flow. And I try to keep it kind of organized, kind of easy to find, stacked up, easy to get to. Um, it just works for me. So, uh, Carbon monoxide detector, because in the cold, I've actually uh, slept uh, with a, I don't sleep with it on, but I've actually warmed up the trailer with a Mr. Buddy, Mr. Heater, Little Buddy Heater, and it's a propane heater. So you don't want to run propane all night. You will not wake up in the morning. Uh, but I will run that in the trailer right before I go to bed. And it only takes about 10 minutes, not even 10 minutes, to warm up this entire trailer, a good 20 degrees. And so the carbon monoxide detector is here, obviously, to make sure I don't die. Little mirror. It's great to take my contacts out at night. I usually take my contacts out as kind of the last thing. So I'm already in the trailer. I've already got my shoes off. I don't want to go outside and use that mirror you saw earlier. So perfect. And Velcro, come right off, and I can just... Take it anywhere if I need to. Bluetooth speaker here. Big music person, as I said. Um, and a good boondocking space where there's no one else. I'll take this outside and crank it up and just kind of listen to some music. So over here on this side. So first off, this bin is kind of a mix mash bin. I have kind of my medicine cabinet. I have allergies. So I have some uh, Zyrtec and things like that in here. Also, just a lot of stuff when I uh, hit the road coming from home. So I just had some band-aids in there and I have some uh, hydrogen some peroxide that I haven't used yet on the road, but I had it, so I didn't want to get rid of it. Um, bandages and things like that. So that's that in here. This space has also become a place to put clothes that I'm still actively wearing. They're not really dirty because sometimes it's cold at night, like I said last night, but today during the day, it's going to get up to like 80. So my clothes I wear at night maybe go in here and the clothes that I'm wearing at night, like uh, my shorts and stuff that I wore during the day, uh, when I change my pants at night, can go right here. And then this space has also become a place to put <laughs> pee bottle, essential, uh, a little heater that uh, doesn't warm up the, the space as much as I hoped, but it's a little heater I have to warm up the space in the cold temperatures. Of course, you need some TP. And then... This is chemicals for breaking down waste in my toilet, which you'll see in a little bit. I have a little uh, portable toilet I can use on the road. Power inverter is also on this side. It's a 500 watt Bestec power inverter, and it's perfect for my setup. I don't need to plug in much. I have a laptop, I have a smartwatch, and I have my phone. So 500 watts was perfect for me. You can see where I have the cord plugged up for my phone. I had that plugged in this morning. Um, the one thing about the trailer, it's pretty good lengthwise, but it's not very tall. Now, I'm six foot, and I can get up on my knees and almost stretch my head up, but I hit my head here, which is fine when I'm just doing this. But when I need to put on my pants, it's a little bit of a different story. Another thing that I wanted to put in here just to make it more homey, um, the trailer has, I don't know if, it'd be, if you can see them from here, the trailer has these lights. 
that flip on, but they're pretty bright, especially when it's dark outside and the doors are closed. It's very bright. So I wanted to give this a little bit of a nice space when I watch a movie or something like that. So I have these little lights in here and they come with a remote control. So it's all sorts of different settings. And now it's kind of slow and you can dim them. You can make them brighter. They're a little sleep timer. So yeah, I love these little things. Those are colored lights. What if you don't want colors? Well, I have these, which are little white fairy lights. And I actually turn these on more than anything because they're dim enough that it just cuts down a lot of the, these bright lights. Cuts down that bright light in here. I can watch a movie, still see things, uh, take my contacts out, stuff like that, but they're not super bright. And just turn them off. There you go. So it gives me a little more of a nice home feeling. In a small space, it's all about finding things easily, but also getting them out of your way. These little 3M hooks that you can pick up really anywhere. It's great for my keys. And I can reach in just with my arm from the outside, inside, and grab the keys easily. I'll actually put my car keys and everything there when I'm not using them. Speaking of more lights, I am a big light guy. These little pop lights, tap on, tap off, are great because not only can I pick it up and take it like this, I can take it anywhere. I actually have them. I don't know if the camera will be able to see them inside here. Oops. <laughs> Come on, there he goes. Uh, in there. And now I can actually see in there in the dark because right now I can see just fine in the light, but at night if I need to grab something, it's a little harder to see. And again, they just take right off. Uh, little magnets. So I love those little lights. I do a lot of boondocking. That means I'm out on off the grid. I need power, obviously, to run some of my electronics, as we all do. So how do I do that? I have solar on the top. It's a 100-watt panel that I mounted to the top of the trailer that runs inside to a power uh, inverter, but also have my charge controller. So my charge controller is up here. And what I love about this is I just have it. These walls are carpeted. So this is actually just Velcroed on. I can easily take this on and off if I need to. It's stuck there. But I can take it on and off if I need to. And this particular brand has two USB ports. So what I usually do at night when my phone's usually dead, I need to charge it. I can plug it up to the power inverter, but it's on the other side of the trailer. Since I'm sleeping over here, I plug up a USB port right here. And then this cup holder becomes a place to hold my phone. <laughs> so I actually just put my phone here and it's charging all night. Below that, it's just a little plastic cabinet that I keep extra things in there like contacts. I had some, I think an extra razor in there, some extra razors. Uh, I have an extra car key, um, just miscellaneous things, some cables and things like that. And I literally just Velcroed it and then that wasn't holding so well. So I had to duct tape it up, <laughs> uh, up out of my way. And then the uh, rope here just keeps all those doors closed so I don't, they don't shift and move in driving. And then maybe hard to see, but from this angle, I actually have a little nightstand over here. I have my glasses when I take my contacts out, my wallet. Here is a contact case. A couple things up here. This uh, is obviously some power. I have some 110s in here. The thing about power in this particular teardrop is even though I have solar, these will only work when I'm connected to shore power. So I do like having these if I ever, I have had a chance to stay at like a friend's house where they didn't maybe have an extra bed or an extra room where I can sleep in inside. But they said, yeah, park outside, sleep in your trailer if you need to, and then connect to the house for shore power. I can still plug up anything I need to here. So I don't even have to worry about solar. I could be in a garage or something like that with no solar coming there, but I can still get power to here. So that's been pretty convenient. Um, also one last little thing, little thermometer just to give me an idea when I wake up in the morning, exactly how cold is it? Because <laughs> sometimes I sleep in places where there's no internet and I can't just check the weather on my phone. One last thing is this little box over here and mostly just toiletries. I have a little face uh, cloth here that I can just wipe my face off with when I wash my face. More contact solution. Uh, I had some cologne and stuff that I had when I hit the road. Um, tissues, like I said, I have bad allergies, so I'm always sneezing. That's basically all it is. It's just more just uh, miscellaneous uh, toiletries and stuff. When I hit the road, I had one can of bear spray because I do quite a bit of hiking alone and I go into some places where there's wildlife. But on the road, someone gave me 
a can of bear spray. So I actually have one in the trailer for self-defense, <laughs> but also if something was ever peek its head inside, I can, I can get it out of here pretty quickly. And then I have two more in the car, which is kind of nice. So this trailer, I picked it up used and I was lucky to find it used for 4,500. This is the 2012 model and I picked it up uh, in 2021. But brand new, expect to pay about 10,000. I think this one, when it was sold brand new, was 10,000. Now that's a baseline model for something you're not gonna get much else in the galley area or anything. Like I said, all that build out, I had to do myself or someone else did it for me, all that stuff. If you want someone to do that for you, like a company to do that for you, expect to pay 20 to 30 to even 40,000 for a teardrop, but a good roundabout number starting out is about $10,000 for a teardrop. These screens are great. I love having these screens open for this nice big door, but sometimes it's just a little too cold uh, to have the entire door open, or I'm in a place where maybe an animal might peek its head in there. So these, door, these doors here actually have their own windows, and there's a small screen here. So in the cold, this is a nice big window where a lot of draft comes in. In fact, last night I crawled in the trailer and I put my hand, as I was in the trailer, I put my hand next to the window. And I noticed that there was a little bit of cool air coming. So I actually have these reflectors. This is actually the one that goes on the top for my, for my vent. But I have a bigger one that goes over the door here. And that's great to keep some warmth air in. Plus, as a bonus, it blocks all light coming into the trailer so I can get a little bit more sleep, sleep in a little bit. Also, no one can peek in the trailer when I have those on. How do I shower on the road? Well, there's a couple ways. Wet wipes being one. Two is a road shower. I was lucky enough, someone just gave me this one. Uh, it's mounted obviously to my uh, crossbars here, or my roof rack. And this is, I think about four gallons. And it's got a place to obviously fill it up with water. And then you can pressurize it, which I have a tire pump for the car that doubles as being able to pressurize this. So when I go to use my shower, I hook, hook this up, turn on the car, turn on the pump, pressurizes it. I'll show you in a little bit. I actually have a shower head I can put on here and bam, I got a shower on the road. I have a privacy tent so I can set it up and actually get a little privacy. Uh, I love this thing. It's actually been very hot. The temperature gauge on it reads up to 118 but it's been past that. It, it, was, it was very hot the last time I used it. So this has been uh, really great to have on the road. These lights right here, great at night. May not be easy to see there in the day, but um, at night I've crawled in, I've gotten to a campsite and they need to unlock the door to crawl in here. Very dark, so I can just flip these on. Occasionally though, I've actually just stuck my head outside from the inside and just flipped this on if I need to pick up my shoes or something from outside. So I like having these little lights out here. These are actually pretty nice. Same side, really. Everything's the same. I love having double doors. Occasionally I have crawled in here. If the sun is on that side more of the trailer, I stay on this side of the trailer and it can do the same thing. Stick my feet out, crawl in there. Or I have a, an awning pole here. So that's what this big metal pole is. Now, when I got on the road, I basically just had a bunch of car camping stuff because I had been camping for a couple of years and I had a big, 12 foot by 12 foot tarp that I would just set up for some shade, sunshade. And so that actually is a place where I can put that. I just clamp it on there with some carabiners and now I've got a nice big sunshade. So I'll show you that in a minute. On this side, I actually have my solar. This is a 100 watt solar uh, panel. And how it's on there is there's some channels that go right here on top of the roof rack and screws mount down there, tighten them down, good to go. As a little extra bonus, uh, I actually put some zip ties here just to make sure that it holds on if for some reason this was ever come loose. But I check periodically and this thing is not going anywhere. It's, it's zip tied down there. How I did the wiring is kind of uh, unique to this trailer. So the wiring runs down. You can see my magic, magic tape job. <laughs> it blends right in. And that wiring goes all the way down to this little drain plug. And you're like, well, why is there a drain plug here? Originally, when this teardrop was built, uh, there was a little sink back here. So down in here, you can't see it, but down in this part of the, uh, the trailer, there's a little one gallon, I think it's about a one gallon tank and a little water pump. And there's a little sink here and you could actually wash dishes. But the previous owner said he took it out because it wasn't very big and very useful. But you can take out the sink, but you can't take out this. So this drain plug allowed you to just have that water coming out as you wash your dishes. I repurposed it as a place to put my, my uh, uh, cables for my solar. This way I didn't have to drill into the teardrop. That was a big worry of mine. I didn't want to do that. 
So again, repurposing what you have. Great thing about when you buy something used, like a teardrop, is sometimes you get a little extra bonuses thrown in. And the previous owner threw in these two big lock boxes up front. So this box, well, let me start over on this box actually, because I'm not on that side. It's a little harder for me to stretch over. This is my camping box. Uh, again, I try to be as organized as possible. It's easy to get things out. This is my Mr. Buddy little heater. Uh, uh, little Mr. Buddy, excuse me, little buddy heater. And again, I put this inside to warm up the trailer. Before I had the road shower, I had this portable shower. This is a little Nemo, I think they call it Helio. I don't know the name, but it's a little portable shower that I still have with me. Can use it, I'm actually just looking to get rid of it. This is my tarp that you'll see me put up in a minute and I'll use this for shade, but I've also used it for getting out of the rain. Tent stakes, because I actually have a tent with me, so I have some tent stakes. Big bag of rope and some carabiners. You can't go wrong when you do any kind of camping. Rope and carabiners, and you'll see I use a decent amount of these when I put the tarp up. Uh, all sorts of lights. Little pop lights are great. They're solar charged. This one actually changes different colors, so it's kind of cool. I hang it up at uh, camp. These string lights are amazing. I love these. I don't remember the brand. M powered? I don't remember the brand. I'll, I'll find it and, and let you know. But this one's also solar powered. And then these string lights, I don't remember how far they go. A good 15 feet, maybe 20 feet. And I'll put them all around camp. And these things have three settings, like a dim, middle, and a bright. On the smallest setting, these things will go all night. So I've actually put these up at a camp, leave them on all night. In the morning, they're still on. So these are great. These are huge investment if you do a lot of camping. Uh, mosquito netting, which I've had to use a lot lately. There's been some pretty bad mosquitoes coming into the summer months. And then when I got on the road, um, I actually had a bunch of candles. So I thought I would use these candles a lot on the road because uh, instead of using powered lights that have to be recharged and everything, I thought I'd use these a lot of camp. I haven't used them once. <laughs> They're just taking up a lot of space, but I have them here and I could just light some candles at, at, at camp. This is just fire starters. I'm pretty bad at starting a fire. I can keep a fire going, but just getting a fire started, I cheat. I get fire starters. And they're in a plastic bag so they don't get wet. Then I have some extra propane tanks because when I first got on the road cooking, that's all I was using. So I already had these extras. And then someone gave me, again, these two, uh, I think they're uh, five gallon or one gallon tanks, five pound tanks. And I keep this extra one up here uh, as an extra. It's always full, ready to go. When that one empties, I'll swap it, fill the other one, and there you go. So let me jump, so that's my camp box, if you will. This box, uh, it's a little of everything. <laughs> All right, first off, here's my shower head. So this is great. So obviously it's a long cord. This is an RV shower head. It actually has a little, little button here I can push in. And basically this will stop the flow of water. So you're not wasting water. So if I'm sitting there laving up, you know, during my shower, the water's not coming out because that's about four gallons of water and that's not a whole lot if you're just gonna let water just drain on you. So stop the water flow and it's in a good metal hose. It's not gonna break easily. Another great thing about buying used things is again, you get some extras thrown in there and the previous owner threw in a wheel boot. <laughs> Huge. I have left this camper unattended and I know it's not gonna go anywhere because this thing is, is definitely gonna not make it where you can roll it. And then there's just a bunch of other stuff in here. I have some my chucks for my for my trailer so it doesn't roll away. I just got some new gloves for picking up firewood and things. My hands don't get it dirty or doing things like the wheel boot. Little camp chair. Um, this is an extra stove because someone gave me that stove back there. So this is an extra little two burner that I actually don't use. So it's kind of a waste at this point, but I have it. And then below here, I when I first got on the road, I was doing a lot of grilling. So I actually have a little bit of charcoal here, but I quickly realized that charcoal is about 10 to $12 a bag, depending on where you're at. And I was only getting about three meals <laughs> out of one bag of charcoal. So it was adding up pretty quickly. So I love cooking over an, open, over an open flame, but it got pretty expensive. So now I just pretty much always cook over uh, the propane. But if it's nice enough, I can get a fire going. I'll just cook over that. So that's been great. But I still have a little bit of charcoal left. And then I also have the wiring for the trailer, which is my shore power wire so I can connect directly to someone's house or a campsite if I actually had to stay at a campsite in Texas because there's not a lot of dispersed camping in Texas <laughs> so I had to stay at an established campground and that had electricity so allowed me to hook up and get my power from there 
So when I got the trailer, um, it had these boxes and it had a mount for a spare tire, but it had no spare tire. And I'm traveling by myself on the road full time for a year. I was not about to go without a spare tire. So I picked up a spare tire, huge. I put some locks on there so no one can just run off with this. Uh, so yeah, I love having it up there. In fact, I actually had to use it once already. I actually had some problems with my tires. Not a flat, but I had to change out my tire. And then those propane tanks, personally, out of one of those, um, again, five pound, one gallon tanks, two, three months on average, and it's like $3 to fill one up. In fact, the last place I filled it up, it was $3 a gallon to fill one up without being a membership to this place. I don't remember the name of the RV and play, the place. $3 to fill it up or become a member, and it was 99 cents. And it was free to be a member. So if you're paying three times as much <laughs> for the same thing, I don't know why you do that. So it was a dollar to fill that up, and that lasts me about three months. So definitely beats out those little green tanks, which are like six bucks each, and I get a week out of one of those. So right here are these two retractable poles. You're gonna see me use in a minute to get the tarp up. And uh, so yeah, I'll use those. In order to get them out of my way, but also not fly away, they're back here on the tongue of the trailer, and it's just a uh, bungee cord holding them down. All right, I always keep the rope on there, ready to go, so I don't know how to put the rope back on there every time. And you'll see that these actually, well, I can't do it because the rope's on there, I'll have to undo it. This will extend out. I don't remember the length that these will get to, but you'll see why I use them in a minute to get the tarp up. Off, off my head when I'm standing in it, under it. All right, so it took me about 10 minutes to put this up, so not too long. And uh, yeah, it's gonna add a lot of bonus uh, for sunshade, but also I can get up out of the rain and I put my chair in there and I'll sit there and sometimes I'll even just keep the door open to the trailer there and run my laptop power to the power inverter inside and I could work for hours just editing my own videos and things on there. These retractable poles are not even extended all the way up. So I'm six foot, I'd say it's about six and a half or so. Uh, so it's up here. Now, what I really like about this tarp is it has these little hooks and these hooks allow me to just put this in here and bam, the reason this rope is on here is because if I really wanted to, I could take these hooks, which are also on the end of the tarp, and I can actually elevate this all the way so I can not even have this into the ground. But I like having the, the, the tarp actually into the ground like this because now it just creates a big shade. I find that if I raise it with these poles at the very end, um, then the sun still comes inside. So this rope is just anchor point skylines to stake down so if i put them on the end it's not flying away but inside here it's pretty good i could probably tighten it up a tad bit more just get a little more taunt and it's pretty good it's a little windy and if i leave this up all night which i tend to do if i put it up it makes a little bit of sound and inside the trailer as i'm sleeping it kind of echoes it can be a little loud um so yeah i don't usually put it up if the wind's going to get too crazy this is about as much wind as i like to put it up in and uh, cause it's actually a couple times has gotten caught with the wind and I got some holes in it from being ripped. Uh, this is a 2020 Subaru Forester sport edition uh, in the trim line. And I got this before I went full-time traveling and before I owned the teardrop. So this was mostly a commuter car for me and I got it for a couple of reasons. For starters, it is great on gas mileage. I, before I got the teardrop, I was getting 29 miles to the gallon. Pulling the teardrop, I'm getting about 20 miles to the gallon. So it's not too bad. Um, still getting pretty good gas mileage. So it's a great commuter car. It does pull uh, the teardrop pretty good. The Forester has a max capacity tow limit of 1,500 pounds. The trailer is 1,000 pounds dry, this particular model. And I have an extra 450 pounds in it. So I'm pretty much at my max. Uh, I went with the teardrop over any other kind of setup for a few reasons. When I got on the road, I thought I was going to just do everything in my car. I was going to sleep in my car. I was going to cook out of my car. I was going to do everything out of my car. But the luxury of having something to really sleep in comfortably was very appealing. It gave me more space and a much better setup for cooking. So the teardrop was a great option, mostly on weight. I'm not pulling something very big. I can't obviously pull a fifth wheel or anything like that. 
Plus the fifth wheel is not really my style. It's a little too big, a little too much to carry. I didn't need anything like that. A little too luxurious, I would actually say, <laughs> for my style. I like to be outside more. So the teardrop is a great option. Another cool thing about the teardrop is it can go pretty much anywhere the car can go. I don't have a lot of problems when it comes to cities, getting it around cities. Gas stations might be a little bit of a challenge, but other than that, it's pretty, pretty good. I can also disconnect from the car pretty easily and I can drop the trailer off and just take the car somewhere. Um, and the teardrop doesn't weigh that much at all, so I can actually pick it up from the tongue and pick it up and move it somewhere. So if I ever find myself in a position where the car is pulled in and I can't back up and I can't turn around and I need to get out of there, if I need to, I could actually disconnect the trailer from the car very easily, pick up from the tongue of the trailer, spin it around, then get the car to the other side. And so yeah, it's got a lot of advantages on the teardrop. Uh, that's pretty much about the car. It's it's a great car. I love, again, the gas mileage on it. It's a brand new car for me. So it's still under the factory warranty and I bought an extended warranty. So another great advantage of that, me traveling right now with this particular car, is that anything happens to it, uh, I'm pretty set. I can just get it to a Subaru dealership and they'll take care of everything else. So yeah, and I just got some new tires for it which are much better than the factory tires that uh, sometimes these roads that I find myself on we're getting a little beat up on. So these are BF Goodrich Trail Terrain TAs. I don't know much about tires, but I do know that these had good reviews and they were rated as perfect for what I use it for, which is a good road tire, but also great on gravel. So this box uh, I got while I was on the road and it's given me so much more space in the car as you'll see in a minute. This is a Thule. I think that's how you pronounce it, Thule. So I got the, the box originally to mostly house my inflatable paddle board, which is back here. And uh, it's actually folded all up, obviously, right now. And this paddle board folds up pretty small, as you can see. Uh, it's actually in a backpack style. But that's originally why I got it, just to get that out of the car and give myself more space. But I found that I actually have so much more use for this. I have some extra shoes up here. I have the pump that is necessary for the paddle board. You also have a paddle life vest i have a little watertight box that when i go paddling i can put my phone in keys things like that so they don't get wet so there's a couple other things that go with this and like i said the pump uh, aside from that i actually have hiker uh, my backpack when i go hiking i usually just do day hikes but that's perfect for that this is a privacy tent that i use when i use my shower occasionally and then in a minute you'll see that i actually have a portable toilet i can actually put this up very simply and use the toilet and use the shower. I have my tent back here. Um, I actually had to do some car, uh, some tent camping in Oregon. Uh, I pulled up to the campsite with the trailer and they're like, yeah, you can stay here, but you can't sleep in your car. It's just uh, tent camping only, which was kind of nice. Actually, it was a beautiful area. I can't remember the name of it, but a gorgeous area. Put the tent up and it kind of gave me that whole camping experience, which is nice. Uh, I got some laundry things up here. Uh, I don't even remember what's in here. <laughs> Oh, car wash stuff. I have a bunch of car wash stuff in here. Um, soap, wax, car wax, stuff like that. I, I like having a clean space. This is my home, so I like having a clean space. Um, I have an extra sleeping bag up here. When I, coming from Florida, when I do car camping or just weekend trips, this is just a 50 degree bag. And I quickly learned on the road, 50 degree bag is not gonna cut it when you're sleeping out in say New Mexico in January. <laughs> so I have a 35 degree bag I always sleep in, but it's an extra sleeping bag. And uh, I have some friends that want to meet me on the road, so now they got a space to sleep in. And this is a inflatable mattress. I think it's a queen size inflatable mattress. So I can actually roll this out in the teardrop and still have room a little bit on the sides. You can put shoes and things like that. So that's a good portion of what's up here. I also have a uh, tent, I'm sorry, not a tent, but a table, a little Coleman fold-up table. I never use it. <laughs> I got it when I used to just do camping on the weekends, but I have it. So it's up here. So in the back of the car, I have kind of my cooking essentials, but a couple other things. I got my cooler back here. This is a Igloo IMX. That stands for injection molding. And I can't tell you the real science behind injection molding, but in my comparison, which I actually did a video about this cooler, uh, I get very good ice retention on this. So you can check out my cooler, uh, my review on that, see how many days of ice I actually get. But compared to the roto molded coolers of Yeti and Orca and all the other ones, those coolers are about 300 bucks. This one goes for 150, so half the price. And I will tell you right now, I got very good comparable ice retention. So great cooler. And uh, 
I added a little light here and this is a bike light. And the reason I put it on there is because at night, I leave this on and uh, then I can open the top and shine right in there. So at night, if I'm needing to get into cooler, I'm not having to dig around in the dark. So nice little hack if you want to. Okay, water. Uh, I have at all times about nine gallons of uh, drinking water with me. So I have two four gallon tanks. I have this one and I have this one. Um, the reason they're different is because I just got them at different times in my life. So that's where they're different. I actually use this one more than anything. And that's why this one's back here is right now because it's nearly empty. And I love this one because of this big, large mouth on there. So easy to fill up. You can fill it up almost anywhere. And then it's got an adjustable spout. When you turn this, you have a little bit of trickle of water or just a lot of water. So I love this, this camp, uh, this uh, water container. Then I have this one as my backup. I'm actually using that one currently because that one's almost out. And then personally, I love a one gallon uh, container because this is so much easier to take inside someplace to fill up. So many national parks and other places have a water fill station that are inside that are mostly only, that are mostly only built to handle or fill up a bottle like this. So I can still put this under one of those and then I got some cold water for the day or some good drinking water. Uh, okay, what else is back here? All right, this big guy, what is this? This is probably a luxury item, but essential luxury item, I would say. This has come in very handy at times when I am not a, near a town where I can get to a public restroom, um, or I'm out in dispersed land like I am now where I can go into the woods, do anything. So this has been very handy. Now I can actually do take this into the trailer and I can use it. Uh, when I'm sitting down, my head's kind of hitting the top of my trailer, but it, it works. Or I can take it into a spot like we are today and I could put up that privacy tent you saw earlier and use it outside. So I love it. And what's really great about this is it actually has a flushing mechanism on it that you can see, uh, that, that, those, that you can see in action. And it has two tanks. It has a top tank, which is a three gallon tank. And that's your fresh water. And then it, at the bottom is a, get this out of the way is a, um, I think it's about five gallons. And that'll hold your, your waste here. So that's your black tank. Um, and I can tell you right now, I can you can keep things in there and it won't get smelly. This was a bag that I had from home that I actually just throw Tupperware into. And I don't use Tupperware all the time, but it's great when I need to, there's some extra food items from dinner in there. Um, I have some, gloves specifically specifically for cleaning this <laughs> so those stay back here out of the way and then i always have just like a towel or something around me because again i love a clean space this is my home after all and so you'll see me um, at camps a lot of times taking things in and out you get a little dirt in there i just wipe this off just get all that dirt off of there the um uh, cooler since it's on the ground especially dirty ground like this i always wipe off the feet before i put it in there so yeah, I love having just an extra towel around just to wipe off spills. Like there's a little bit of water here from where I got water out of this earlier to put in my in my water container. It's great to clean up. All right, so back here, <laughs> some box wine, only the finest Walmart box wine that you can get. Uh, I had a bunch of car wash stuff when I hit the road, and it's nice to have a clean car occasionally. So a little bin here, a car wash stuff. That extra bucket serves as a good place to put water if I need to. Um, yeah, I've, I've used it a few times to put some water in there. Um, so there's that. This is a fold-up stool that I actually used to get into the rooftop box. Um, and I love that it lays flat and I just keep it up here. And you'll see that it was kind of a game of Tetris to get everything back here, but mostly nothing shifts while I'm driving. And that's why it's in this particular order for me in this particular car and the way things I have this doesn't shift too much things slide a little bit but nothing where it's falling over i'm not getting water spilling over anything fun fact this was originally in my trailer all the time and this fell over a few times so that's not great <laughs> luckily it's before i used it it was just water so but yeah it's much better back here on my side where i'm at now this is kind of like my pantry um i got this car organizer way before I did all this, just to put all sorts of miscellaneous things in, but it has been a lifesaver. You can see I have miscellaneous things, um, ropes and uh, some envelopes. You never know, you may need some letter out for some reason. I actually think I had to do that with something recently. Anyways, pantry stuff. So mostly dry goods, um, snacks, things like that. I usually have, 
I don't like these mountain meals, but I usually have at least one on me because they're great for like a lunch snack. Um, sometimes you just get lazy and you don't want to cook. So they're convenient for that. Uh, soups and things like that back here. I also keep some condiments. I have some spaghetti sauce actually, because I do make spaghetti from time to time. I'm a big salad person, salad dressing. Just condiments in general. I'm about to run out of coffee, and that's why I have this big bag of coffee here. So that's good to go when I run out of the coffee I have in the trailer. Some sandwich stuff. And then I have two areas of fruits and vegetables. I have this big bowl that I keep all my fruits and vegetables. I like fruits and vegetables. So this is nice. None of these things are just running around in here, rolling around when I'm driving. So I love this big bowl. And this bowl doubles as my salad bowl, but I've also done like just a big meal in this versus the plates that I have in the back. They may not hold an entire meal. This has been pretty convenient. And then this is actually a lunch kit that I used to get from my old employer. And it's uh, more vegetables. And I like it because this then covers up and these vegetables will stay pretty good. I mean, the car gets pretty hot in here. It's not a refrigerator, but it stays in the shade and the sun's not beating down on it. So I find that this keeps certain vegetables pretty good. Onions, very good. Tomatoes, pretty good. I have some peppers in here as well. Um, so yeah. And then it, again, game of Tetris, everything just fits really nicely. Nothing shifting around in here. And then this particular organizer had two front pockets where I keep my cliff bars up front because not only are they great to take on the trail, they're great when I'm driving, I can reach my arm back and I got a snack on the road. Your side of the car, the, what, the side you're closest to, is mostly empty. And I'll tell you, that's kind of a good feeling when you live in your car full time. Um, I actually had this whole area of uh, full of jackets uh, for the winter time, but I've recently kind of put those in other places. I've actually put them all into a bag here that's kind of wedged in here. This is a bag by a company called Maiden that I did a review for if you're interested. I can send you the link for that. But uh, yeah, I put mostly all my winter clothes in here, which gave me this whole empty space. And it may seem weird, like, why do you want that extra, extra space? It's just you traveling, you don't need it. It's just something about gaining some space back and having a little bit more room. It's very nice to just say, hey, I actually have this extra room now. I can put something back here if necessary, but it's nice to just kind of get a little more space. Another organizer, which is super great for flashlights. I have some camera gear. I have some batteries. I have these little reusable zip ties. I have some pug spray. Um, just a mix mash of stuff. Closer to you on the floor, I have a few things. One of them is a vacuum. I gotta tell you, that is probably the most essential thing you can have when you live in a tiny home because your tiny home's gonna get dirt in it occasionally. So I use that to vacuum up the seats in here. I use it to vacuum up the trailer, um, get all that little particles of sand and dust and dirt out of there. I love it. Reusable grocery bags. I try to not get it, use as much plastic bags. So I like having re reusable uh, grocery bags. And then I have my trekking poles laid across flat here. So at the very bottom, got my dirty <laughs> trekking pole sticking out there. So down here, I have this big box, and it's actually just a tackle box, but I don't use it as fishing gear. I use it as a toolkit. <laughs> One of the most essential tools you can have on the road, duct tape, save your day every time. Uh, drill, I have some, um, move all the stuff in there. I have some crazy glue, another thing you can always have not too much of on the road, crazy glue. Uh, socket set, and then below this, uh, it's just an array of tools. Most of the stuff I just had when I had an apartment and you pick up things. So these little hooks have been super handy on the road. Again, I can hang my car keys from them. I hang sometimes um, phone wires and things like that on them. They're really handy. Velcro is essential on the road. You'll never know how much you use that. Glue, I actually had glue just from home. I just brought it with me. Stapler, I had it. <laughs> I want to bring it. Yeah, and then screwdrivers, and I had to do some wiring when I got the power inverter, so I have some extra wiring here for that. But, oh, and then zip ties. Get some zip ties. You'll never know how much you use them at camp. I have various lengths. I have really long ones. Shorter ones, I usually have ones that are shorter than this, but you'll never know how much you use zip ties. 
on the road. Inside, uh, up front of the car, I have a couple things up front. First off, occasionally, my campsite that I'm at, um, it's very buggy, <laughs> so I don't just hang out outside. So I have these, I'm sure you've seen it on SUV RVing before. I have these which go over my window. These unfortunately only fit the back window, even though I, when I bought them, they said they'd fit the front, they don't. <laughs> but I'll put these over the back, roll down the back windows, and then I'll sit in the driver's seat at night um, when it's gotten dark and the bugs are really bad or something. And I'll watch YouTube or watch uh, Hulu or something like that, just, you know, leisurely time. But at least I don't have to suffer inside with the heat or anything. I can roll the windows down and have these. So these are up here. And then as I mentioned, when I got on the road, I was lucky enough that somebody gave me a can of bear spray. Somebody, I found a can of bear spray at a campsite, which I'm sure someone wasn't too happy about losing a can of bear spray because they were about 45 bucks a pop. And then I had a, a can that I bought when I first got on the road. So I have more bear spray over here, but I like having one on the driver's side and the passenger side. I've never had to use them. But if I'm ever at camp and uh, an animal comes in because they see, smell me cooking some, some meals up, I can reach over and I can get it. In fact, I've actually kept this in the galley area a few times where I know I'm in bear country. So it's great to have it on both sides. The driver's side, or I'm sorry, the passenger side is empty. I love that. When I first got on the road, before I got my roof box, this was all full of all sorts of things. Mostly shoes on the floor. Now down here, what you're seeing right now, trash bag. I don't usually use these bigger trash bags. I just had this, and so I'm using it right now. But I usually use little bags you buy at the, or you get at the grocery store when you buy groceries, because they're smaller. Uh, but there's two things down here I want to point out. One of them is this little shoe caddy. The backpack you saw in the car earlier, which houses all of my uh, winter clothes at the moment, it's a company called Maiton. And inside of that travel backpack was this shoe caddy. So now your dirty shoes, and these are very dirty because they've been in the dust out here, go inside here and less dirt inside the, the, the uh, car. One essential piece that I recommend for anybody, you don't even have to be a full-time traveler. Get one, and that is a portable car jumper because you never know when you're going to be a spot stranded your batteries died in your car and there's no one around to jump your car this one is awesome it's made by noco and this is a lithium ion battery now this is great because of its size i actually store it underneath the car seat i only had it out to talk to talk about it today and it's two things a car battery jumper so here is the alligator clamps that come with it all right and usb I actually plugged in my phone to there last night and charge your phone. So it's a power bank and car jumper. So great. Oh, and one last thing. It actually has a flashlight on it. Oh, there they are. You can use them in the dark. So yeah. And you may not be able to see it, the lights, but this one actually has a few things I love about it. One is being able to show you how good the uh, battery is. I just charge it so it sh I can see it's showing green. And then this has reverse polarity uh, protection, so you can't reverse your clamps, which is nice. And a few other little bonuses that I don't forget the nitty gritty about it, but this one's huge. Love this one. Portable. I think it's about $80. Another good reason I love this car is for CarPlay. This car has, I think, an eight and a half inch touchscreen on it, and it is huge to navigate when you're driving. And all the places I go to are new to me. So I'm always using maps. I always have the screen on there. Phone will charge while I'm in the car, connected through the internal USB ports, but it's not the fastest charging system. I think they're about one amp. So a long time ago, before I got into traveling full time, I picked up this little Best Tech uh, uh, power inverter. So it's just 200 watts, it's not a ton. A couple reasons I like this. One, 12 volt, plug it in there. And then it has a uh, 110. Uh, so I can actually plug up my laptop to this and I've, I've actually plugged up my laptop while I'm driving and just charge the laptop. I'm not actually using the laptop. I'm just charging the laptop while I'm driving. And then it has two USB ports on there and they're two and a half amp. So I can charge the phone twice as fast on this than I can in the char. And as I was just explaining to Tristan here, uh, when I go say on a hike and my battery's a little low on my phone and I know I'm going to be filming and stuff on my hike, I plug my phone into here drive to the camp, to the hike and this will charge it twice as fast on the phone. So I got more juice than just plugging it into the car. Personally, on my journeys every month, I'm personally spending about $1,300 a month. Now that's gas prices, which are a little high. Out west, they're a little bit higher than even out east, I think. Uh, groceries have been a little higher out here, I've found, unfortunately. But I also 
have some personal things back home and on on the road that I spend every month regardless. Uh, every month I start off with a storage. I have storage back home that that storage every month is about $93 a month. So I'm, I'm uh, have that on my monthly expense. Cell phone bills. One of the reasons I like my uh, phone is it has two lines on there, or two SIM uh, lines on there. Uh, so I have Verizon and I have T-Mobile. So this gives me the benefit of flexibility of having two different carriers. Sometimes Verizon's the better one, like it is out here. Sometimes T-Mobile's the better one. Uh, so this gives me flexibility of having two lines, but that means two cell phone bills. So I have those. Uh, and just some miscellaneous other things. Food, uh, I mentioned gas couple of things I'm spending every month that definitely add up. So personally, I'm spending about $1,300 a month. I don't always include, but I should get better about including things like um, if I have to buy new shoes, if I have to buy a new jacket. When I first hit the road, I, coming from Florida, I did not have the right winter gear. So I uh, have got, had to get a couple new jackets on the road. Car maintenance, car maintenance is another one. When you live in your car or travel full-time in your car or travel just as much as even Tristan does, then you find that you're going to do a lot more car maintenance, obviously. You're burning more gas, but you're also having to do more oil changes. So my oil changes, uh, this only takes synthetic, so it's a little more expensive. And instead of every six months, I'm doing those roughly every three months. So that's an added expense to consider. I have unfortunately had some uh, maintenance issues with the trailer. Luckily, nothing major with the car. But with a trailer, I cracked an axle once, and that was about $1,100. So that's into my monthly expense. So you, my monthly expenses average $1,300, but some, some months are more, some months are a little less. But that's a good average. All right, well, Eric, thank you for sharing your setup Absolutely. with us. Uh, hope yeah. you guys enjoyed all the, the tips and the, the gear info he gave. Lots of good information here. And Eric, why don't you tell the people where they can find you and uh, how they can follow along on your adventures. Absolutely, so I am Escaping Normal Life. That is the name of my YouTube channel. Also on Instagram, where I'm posting daily pictures and reels. Uh, Instagram makes you type in only one word, so technically it's insta, uh, es technically it's escaping.normal.life, but you can also find me just by typing in Escaping Normal Life. On YouTube, I'm talking a little bit about everything. I think I have something on there for a little bit of everybody. You don't have to be a full-time traveler to probably find a little bit of advice or things you just like to view on my channel. I have uh, advice from living on the road to gear review. I've done some um, bag reviews. I did a cooler review. I've done a couple other gear reviews. Uh, I have sometimes just beautiful scenery if you just are interested in some entertainment value and just want to see some cool parts of the world. But recently I've also just been sharing personal stories from the road. So if you're interested in finding out a little bit of what it's like to live full time and what it's like to be a solo traveler, I also have those things for you. So yeah, I think there's a little bit of every everything out there for you. Lots of good stuff to check out on his channel and we'll put links to those. And then all the, if there's a specific piece of gear you guys are interested in, we'll try to list all of that stuff in the video description too. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Thanks again, Eric, for yes, sharing your you. setup. So much fun. We'll see you guys in the next one. Be sure to check out Adventure Know How, my new site, where you can gain access to a map of all of my free campsites, plus monthly bonus videos that you won't find anywhere else. Learn more at adventureknowhow.com. And for links to everything else SUV RVing related, visit suvrving.com. Links to these sites and more will be in the video description.